Determining whether you're southpaw or orthodox shouldn't necessarily be a reflection as to whether you're left or right-handed. I've trained many people that are left-handed and fight orthodox, and many people that are right-handed and have decided to take on a southpaw stance. If you have never boxed before, it won't matter anyway, because you don't have a preference. So, you want to choose whether you're going to do southpaw or orthodox strictly according to preference, and not because you're either left or right-handed. However, whatever decision you do make, you want to make sure that you stick to that decision and see out that you are either orthodox or southpaw throughout all of your routines. So, determine exactly what you want to do and make that your stance as a boxer moving forward. Once you've determined which stance you want to commit to, we're going to start with the footwork. Feet together, up onto the heel of your rear foot, out at 90 degrees, up onto the ball of your foot, out again at 90 degrees with a small step forward and out on the lead foot. Transfer your weight from left to right for balance. And again on the side angle, up on the heel, on the ball of your foot and a small step forward. Make sure both toes are pointing forward, feet are shoulder width apart. We're gonna start with moving forward and backwards. With your lead foot on the ball of your foot, you wanna slide that foot forward. Following with the rear foot, making sure that both toes are pointing forward and feet remain shoulder width apart. Try to keep your heels off the ground through this process. Moving from left to right is similar. All on the ball of your foot, try to keep the heels off the ground. And when you step across with the lead foot, make sure the following foot doesn't come in too close, maintaining that shoulder width. With the pivot, all on the ball of the lead foot. Make sure the heels stay off the ground, pivoting 90 degrees at a time, backwards and forward. Moving around to the left and around to the right. Make sure that you swing the heel out of the leading foot. In this case, out to the left, I swing my left heel out. And now leading out to the right, I swing my right heel out. Guard, fingertips to the temple, elbows in and chin down. Hands open and shoulders relaxed. Let's put everything together. Getting into our boxing stance, lifting up the hands, elbows in, chin down and moving. Try to mix it up as much as you can, maintaining the composure in your feet, moving left, right, forward, backwards, pivoting 90 degrees to the right and 90 degrees to the left, moving around to the right and around to the left. Try to be distinctive in your movement. Throwing straight punches with precision, safety and composure is crucial. All punches must come off the guard and return to the guard without detour. Throwing the jab, you're going to peel the hand off the guard, rotate the fist and clench on impact. As you execute the jab, you want to roll the shoulder forward and pull the rear shoulder back. Rotating at the torso and the hips behind the shot and trying to avoid twisting at the feet. As I roll the lead shoulder forward, the rear shoulder pulls back to achieve as much length in the punch as possible. Moving on to the rear hand, you're gonna throw that cross again straight off the guard, clenching on impact. I keep my cheek into the shoulder that I'm punching with to protect myself from my opponent's punches while I'm punching. The transition from one punch to another is crucial. As I throw my lead shot, I pull back and replace it with my rear shot. Executing the jab, pulling back, replacing it with a cross. Wherever the jab lands, the cross needs to land. Try to be precise and keep your eyes on the target. As I rotate my shoulders, I naturally tuck my chin into my shoulders to protect myself from my opponent's punches and maintain balance and composure as I'm executing those punches. Stepping with the punch is crucial. You want to be able to cover distance as you're executing the punch, as you won't always be in range with your opponent. 
I want to simultaneously step forward as I jab with the lead foot and the lead hand simultaneously executing the movement at the same time. I land my foot and reach the very end of my punch at the exact same time. All movement must be done on the ball of the foot and pushing off the rear. As I execute the rear shot, I want to step up with my lead foot, following with my rear and executing the cross in the same time as I did with the jab and the lead foot. As I step up my rear foot, the cross executes. Let's bring everything together. In the boxing stance, moving the feet around, timing the hands and the feet at the same time. Executing parallel boxing punches, where the left hand is being executed with the left foot and the right hand is being executed with the right foot. Mix it up between single shots and one twos. When it comes to defending your opponent's jab and cross, the most effective ways are the parry and the catch. And these are the ones that we fundamentally learn at the beginning stages of boxing. Against an orthodox fighter, you'd be using your right hand to parry the punch away. Against a southpaw fighter, you'd be using the left hand to parry their jab away. You want to be parrying on the outside of the shot so that it crosses over their power hand and restricts them from being able to follow up their jab. So in this instance, we're going to, from the tight guard, use the right hand to parry the jab. You don't want to go too far out and away from the guard. You want to keep it nice and tight and essentially line it up with the opposite hand that remains at the guard. So from the guard, you're going to parry across and get the head ever so slightly off the center. Parry across, head off the center. Now when it comes to catching the rear hand, you want to turn that hand in front of your face and absorb the shot. Turning that same hand in front of the face and absorbing the shot. The reason why we parry and catch with the rear hand is so that we can leave our lead hand readily available for a first line of attack and when we are ready to counter. So with the rear hand, parry and catching. You can also practice it with the opposite hand if you were to be up against the south pole. Parrying and catching. But try to practice it more so with the rear hand because the majority of opponents that you come up against are going to be orthodox boxers. So with the rear hand, parrying and catching. Parrying and catching. We're now going to use a progressive drill that's going to implement all of the components that we've covered so far. Our footwork, our punches and defences. On the spot, with a nice tight guard, I want you to lead with your jab and back to the guard. Next is going to be a jab and then a parry. Back to the guard. Jab, parry, one, two. Back to the guard. And again, a jab, back to the guard. Jab, parry, back to the guard. Jab, parry, one, two. Back to the guard. Be certain that after each progression, you are settling your feet, finding your balance, bringing those hands up nice and tight with the chin down and executing the punches off the guard and then returning back to the guard without any detours. Nice and tight with the parry and returning those hands back to the side of the head after every single shot. Finally, we're going to implement our footwork with that same progression. So now, keeping it simple, we're going to move forward and step on each progression. So in this distance, nice tight guard, we're going to step forward on the jab and then even up. Step forward on the jab and then up on the parry. Even up. Step forward on the jab, up on the parry, and then up on the one, two. Even up. Stepping forward on the jab, back to the guard. Step forward on the jab, step up on the parry, back to the guard. Up on the jab, up on the parry, up on the one, up on the two, back to the guard. Up on the jab, back to the guard. Up onto the jab, up onto the parry, back to the guard. Up onto the jab, up on the parry, up on the jab, up on the cross, back to the guard. To summarise the session, the biggest takeaway today is footwork, guard, straight punches and balance. Try to practice everything as much as you possibly can. 
Don't neglect the basics and think you've mastered them overnight. You can never practice the basics enough. Isolate your rounds to just footwork, up and back, left and right, etc. Just punches and then bring them together. Practice them over and over and over again. Enjoy.